pastor on Wednesday asked me to come and do prayer um, for today. And when I said yes, the first thing that ran through me was Ephesians chapter 6. Um, it's been something that I've actually been looking at for the past couple years. And um, so I knew when he said that there's what he wanted me to talk about and then pray. So I want to do some prayer at the end, and I want us all to pray. Um, but what I want to do is first I want to tie in Ephesians 6 to what Igor has been talking about. And so I'm going to try to take you on the road, and I'm going to do it real short here um, to get to that point of uh, what Igor has been talking about and kind of what I've been hearing others. Even Tom kind of mentioned some stuff on Friday that was like, that was it. And then, you know, I've just been hearing it over and over again. Can we bring up the uh, types of prayers real quick? So uh, today, Pastor Vern has been teaching on the, the types of prayers and stuff. And today I want to put those into effect because he's been teaching on them. So when you learn something, the best way to learn is to do. And then when you, when you do, then you teach. So I want to keep these in mind, you know, the confession, declaration, commanding, binding, agreement, knocking. Uh, the prayers of petition is a little different. I don't know if that will come about. Um, that's more, uh, he'll probably get into it, where how I've done it is I actually write out a petition and write something out, and then we actually present it to the Lord. This is a petition for you. I know there's other ways, but this is the way we've done it in the past. We take communion with it. It's a petition. Um, I'll give an example. Like when we were in Idaho for the first church building, we did a petition of prayer, and a year later, that came to, uh, to pass. So then we have intercessory, and that's the type of stuff in warfare, which goes along with Ephesians 6 um, in the praise and worship and that type of stuff. But today I want to put some of those in effect, the things that we've been learning. I think we've gotten up to number eight. Um, so we can t take some of that stuff that he's been teaching and apply it today. But I want to go to Ephesians chapter 6, so we can get that up there. Verse 10. I'm going to try to get through this so we have time, time to pray. But there's a lot here that I want to talk about. Um, finally. So this word here in the Greek means a lot than just finally. Um, if you know the book of Ephesians, especially chapter 1, there's a lot of promises in it. That we have every spiritual blessing right? There's a lot of good things in here. We're adopted. We're, we're sons and daughters of, of, of the Father. Uh, Jesus made a way for us to get to the Father. There, there's a lot of good things that he talks about in the first couple of chapters that are promises to us that we get. So the book of Ephesians is a really good book on finding out identity, uh, the promises. I mean, if you think about every spiritual blessing, what does that actually think, mean? And we have access to all of that in Ephesians 1. But this word finally goes... Paul is saying, if you didn't get anything else out of this book, nothing, get this. So you got all these good things, but he's saying, get this part. This is the most important part that I'm talking about. Finally, brethren, if you didn't get anything else, pay attention to what I got to say here. Because if we don't get this, the first part can get taken away. So he's saying, pay attention to what I have to say here. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now, I looked up that word. I thought that word power was the same as Acts 1.8, dunamis. It's not. It's a different word. And I'm not going to pronounce it, but it's a different word in the Greek. <laughs> well, maybe I'll try. Kratos. I think that's how you say K-R-A-T-O-S. It's Strong's 2904. Here's what this one means. So Acts 1-8 is duminous. That's where we get our word dynamite. I think if they had the nuclear bomb back in that day, that's what that means. It's that powerful. It's that big of an explosion where it just takes out everything. That type of power just moves heaven and earth. But this one means dominion, strength, and manifested power. So we're talking about God's kingdom. So finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and the power, his manifest power of his kingdom here on earth is what he's talking about here. I just saw that this morning. 
All right, next verse. So I just want to throw that in there. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, he says this twice before he talks about the armor of God. So anything, anytime something is repeated, we got to take special attention. Now, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through the end, is some of the most repeated words in the Bible. So he says, put on the armor of God twice. So this is important, and this is what we're going to tie into here in a minute. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand. So if we don't put on the armor of God, we can't stand. And what are we standing against? The wiles of the devil. Now I just want to take a minute and talk about this real quick. Wiles. The meaning of this is one who travels on, and on or operates on a specific road or avenue. It carries the idea of direction, plan, and purpose. This tells us that the devil is not traveling randomly. He has a specific avenue and purpose for his attack. So he has a plan. And he has an avenue of attack. This word, there's a lot more to this. Wiles, I don't want to get into it. But basically, it's just, this is an avenue. This is his plan. This is his attack. He's very organized, very deliberate in what he does. Then we talk about the wiles of the devil. So let's figure out what his name means. <clears throat> One who repeatedly strikes until successfully penetrating an object to ruin it, affect it, or take it captive. So what he wants, he continually strikes down this avenue until he gets his way with it, until he ruins it, destroys it, or takes it captive. What I'm going at today, twofold. One, I want to tie it to what Igor's been saying, but I want to tie it to what's going on in, in the culture, not just in the United States, but in the world. But we're coming up in, into a very important election, probably one of the most important, and I'm not trying to get political. This is spiritual. Because what we're going to find out, go to the next. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So you can hate the other side or whatever. And try, I don't like both parties, to be honest with you. They're both crooks. They're both corrupted. So it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. They're both corrupted. They're corrupted people. Now, there are good people in there, and those are the ones that I want to be able to stand up and fight. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So it is not the person or the people or the party that we're going against. It's what's behind them. It's the wiles of the devil. He has an avenue of attack, and he wants to take us down this road. And so we're in a war. And I don't think we understand how important the battle is in front of us as a whole in the church in the West. Because we're not standing up. We're not taking that stand. We're not putting on the armor. So this word wrestle has a big meaning. It is a dirty, drag out, fight to the death type of thing. It's not like where we think of the fake wrestling of the WWE and they're hitting the chairs. Or even the Olympic style wrestling where you take them down the mat. That's not the wrestle that it's talking about here. This is a dirty, no holds bar to the death. <laughs> in the explanation of it, there was an actually recorded back in Roman times when Paul was writing this, where there were in the boxing part, there's three parts to it. In the boxing part, which is the second part, where the guy gets punched in the mouth, knocks out all his teeth, instead of spitting them out and letting the enemy know what happened, he swallowed them. Sometimes we get knocked out, we, got, we get hit. Sometimes we just need to swallow it and keep going so the enemy doesn't know what they've done. But this word wrestle, it goes beyond what we can imagine. I don't even know, it, like even the, the, um, the octagon, MMA, that doesn't even take it far enough. But what I want to take a notice here is the word against. See how many times this word pops up. So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So it's not people that, we're, that we have a problem with. We got to get that in our head because we got to pray for our enemies, pray for the ones that persecute us, right? So we need to be praying for the political leaders. 
because they are made in the image of God, and we got to pray that their eyes are open so that they can come to the salvation of the Lord, that they're not lost. I don't want them lost. I want them to come into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of light. I don't like what they're doing, but I need to pray for them because what is behind them is driving them, and that is against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Five times that word against is up. Five times. Again, something repeated in the Bible, we got to take note of. So this word against means, pro, it's the Greek word pros, which means face to face. So we're in a knockout, drag out fight war with a no holds barred fight to the death, face to face with an enemy. Now, I'm not going to go into all this, but this is structured in a military, the, the principalities, powers, rulers, and all that stuff. This is a military style that the devil has set up his kingdom. Remember, he has an avenue, a plan, and he's going to strike and strike and strike until he ruins it or takes it captive. To the next. So therefore, take up the whole armor of God. So again, so he starts it, take up the armor of God, he ends it with the armor of God. So without the armor, it'll be hard to fight this battle, right? So he's stressing how important it is to put on the armor. Now, something personal. When I first got saved, charismatic, um, full gospel, whatever, church, People were weird, and they did weird things. And I saw some weird things when it came to spiritual warfare, so I stayed away from it because I'm like, I don't want to end up like those people. I don't want to be weird. Now, God has us sometimes to do things that are, does it make sense? He does. But these people were weird because they're like, we're going to put on the belt, and they would act like they're putting on the belt. They were doing weird things. And so I stayed away from it. But a few years ago, God says, you need to look at this because this is important. So it says, take up the whole armor of God. And I'm like, how do you put on the armor of God? How does, I, I don't understand because I got people, you know, well, when you get up in the morning, you, you put on the helmet of salvation. And then, you know, you go through the motions. I'm like, no. Go to the next. Therefore, Stand, having girded your waist with truth. So now he's going to tell us how to put on the armor. But you got to look at it and you got to study it. Truth. Who is truth? Not what is truth, because that's the question that society says. What is truth? You have your truth, I have my truth. Sorry, that doesn't work that way. Truth is, if I jump off a building, I'm going to fall to the ground because of gravity. That is the truth. You can believe, no, I'm going to float and fly away. Well, you can believe that, but then you jump off the building, you're going to fall down. That's the truth. There is a spiritual truth to, and principles that do take effect whether you believe in them or not. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. He is the truth. I'm not going to get into all of it. Go to the next. Oh, no, stay. Go back. Sorry. <laughs> Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Who is righteous? Why are you righteous? Because of his righteousness. See, your righteousness is like filthy rags to the devil, right? They amount to nothing. You can put it into your own effort. And it will amount to nothing. It is when we put on his righteousness that we are made righteous. So it's his righteousness, not mine. So he is guarding, his righteousness is guarding the vital organs. Next. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace. Who's the prince of peace? Who gives us true peace in Philippians 4? A peace that surpasses all understanding. Where does it come from? Now, in this, I want to point something out with the shoes. Roman shoes. They had very, like, thick spikes. 
like cleats, but weight, they're sharp for two reasons. One, they keep you grounded. So when the enemy is attacking you, you don't move. You're, you're held. So everything around you can be going crazy, but you're grounded in his peace. You have peace because of, you're grounded. You're stuck in the ground. You can't be moved because of his peace. Second fold on that is when you take out the enemy, you can do the final blow and step on him with his peace. So he's the prince of peace. True peace comes from him. Now, the world will offer you a type of peace, but it's false and it, it doesn't last. It, it leaves you unsatisfied. Next, taking the shield of faith. Who's the author and finisher of your faith? Are you starting to see a theme through the armor? And then lastly, next one. Oh, yeah. Take up the helmet of salvation. Who's our salvation? So you see that the armor of God, all of it, points back to one person. And this is how it ties into what Igor has been saying. In order to put on the full armor of God, you must have a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how you put on the armor. See, I didn't understand that for a long time. I thought, you read your Bible and you get to know truth. Yeah, but you get to know the one who wrote the truth. You're coming into relationship, into that secret, quiet place. See, a lot of times, what Igor was saying last time, we get so busy running here, serving here, serving here, serving here, that we're forgetting about the relationship part, which then out of the overflow we can serve. Because what happens is, if you're not in this personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you don't have the overflow and you become empty and what do you have to offer? It's only in that personal relationship. That's how we put on the armor of God. If you don't have that and you try to go in, into battle with this enemy, he will take you out because he's determined Remember, the, that word wrestle is a no holds barred. There's no rules. He doesn't play fair. And where he's going now is the youth. Look at what is happening and how they, they are allowing things that are just, a, we can't understand. There's no way 20 years ago, would, or even 10 years ago, would this have been appropriate. But for some reason, just that quick, people's minds change. Because of what's behind it. We have 12 weeks or two and a half months until this election. We're not voting for a person to get into office. What we're voting for is what spirit is going to drive this country. And so what I want to do at, here today is I want to take some time and put into practice Things that we've been learning during the prayer time, taking authority, commanding, declaring some things for this nation. The church needs to wake up and understand we are in a no holds bar fight with an enemy that wants to destroy and ruin everything that is of God's kingdom. But we walk in his power, his manifest power, his manifested domain, his manifested authority that we walk in that is ours. And we can declare things into the spiritual realm, and it has to obey because of who he is. See, he has already won the victory, but we have to get in and do the fighting. The victory is won, but we have to fight. That don't make sense. Of course, it's God's kingdom. Spiritual, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. He's given us authority and rule in this earth. See, when Jesus took back the keys, he handed them back to us. He says, now you rule, now you reign. It's time for us to be able, and not get mad at the party or the people in the party. Yeah, they frustrate me too. And I, I follow pol politics very closely. I feel like it's, it's a duty of mine to do it because when my dad was a Vietnam vet, he went to war and, and not died, but he fought and saw people die. It, it, he came back not the same person. I owe it to him to be informed. Yeah. 
I owe it to every veteran who stood before us who have fought for this country to be informed. I owe it to them. They, some gave their life for it, and not all of them died on the battlefield. They came back different. It is our responsibility to fight with them. They go onto the battlefield. We go onto the battlefield of the spiritual realm where we're on our knees and we're declaring what is going to take place and allow the spirit to intercede through us. So if we look at the armor, how we put it on is that personal, close relationship with Jesus Christ. And now we're ready to go into the battlefield and win the victory. So what I want to do is, can we have some, can you play just a little bit of music here? What I want to do is, I want you guys to have the opportunity to pray, because we're the prayer people of this church, right? Why do we come here on Sundays? One, to learn, then go home and do. We need to come together and do something. Put action to the faith that we have. So what I want to do is I want to open it up to come up and begin to pray for, for the direction of this country and this world. Because it's not just a fight here. This, if you look at what's going on, it's a global thing. This is trying to usher in the global, the one world stuff, the Antichrist. And I want to prolong that as long as possible. I want Jesus to come back but I also want my kids to have a, a, a place that they can live and enjoy the freedoms that we did. And I want more people to come into the kingdom of God. I want those who are blind to be able to see the truth and come to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. We're not in a so dark of place where it's like, okay, just end it. There is still time, and we must still do our job. Amen? So I'm going to start, and then if you feel led, I want you to come up, and we're going to pray this stuff out. Or wait, hold on. You know what? Let's do it this way. Let's do it in groups. Yeah, let's just break up into groups. Let's have about four, five, six groups throughout, and we'll do it that way. And just get into group, get into agreement with one another. Then if you get something, you know, you can share it, write it down, and then we'll see if it pertains or whatever. Right? So let me pray real quick. So Father God, hallelujah. The second part is if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got to get it. Because it's not just about speaking in tongues. What it says is what I talked about earlier, the power is within the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is what we get. Look at Peter. He couldn't stand up. He cussed out a little girl because he couldn't even declare the name of Jesus. And then when he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he stands up and he proclaims to the mob that is coming after him to kill him that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord and 3,000 people get saved. That's what the power does. So if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need it, you got to get it. Not only that, but then the Holy Spirit gives you the prayer that is perfect and beyond the limits of our mind. So, Father God, we pray that you make straight the path of this country. Make straight. Bring righteousness back into this country. Father God, we declare right now righteousness will stand up. What is right and what is good and what is holy will be declared from every Bible-believing Christian. We will no longer shrink back. We will no longer pull back, but we will stand with the shoes of peace and we will be planted and not moved in the truth of the Almighty God. We will not be pushed. We will not be swayed. We will not doubt. Hallelujah. There's a, yes. There's a quote that I've heard before that 
silence in the face of evil is evil itself. So I come in agreement with the people in here today that we will not be silent. That when we see evil, we will point it out and we will say, you are evil. No matter what comes our way, no matter how they try to destroy us, no matter how they come at us, we will stand because we put on the armor of God, because we got into close relationship with the Savior, because we're in close relationship with Jesus Christ. We are wearing the armor, and we will be able to stand in the face of evil and not be silent. I declare it. I decree it that the church of God will not be silent. They will rise up in one voice, in one voice, in unity, the church will rise up. Every denomination out there will rise up in one voice and declare what is evil is evil, and we will not be silent. Ben, can I have you come up? And I also pray that any traps that the devil has set for this election will be foiled. Amen. Will not come to pass. All the lies that spill out of the mouths of the politicians will have no effect. They will fall to the floor and have no effect. They will not be able to do what it was set out to accomplish to do. Did you know in the Bible... I forget where it's at, but I, a long time ago, I went through the Bible, and I underlined everywhere, everywhere where the word was translated rhema. And one time, it's used for evil. See, rhema is when God speaks to us, and it comes alive. And we act upon, that's what, in Romans 10, 17, that's what gets us our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the rhemas of God. But there's one time, and it's in the gospel somewhere, where it's used as, it's translated evil. That means the devil can speak ramas too. And people will believe him. And they will, see, whatever God does, the devil perverts. So there's an, a, a faith that is perverted, that, that will bring about bad things. So right now, I declare that all the lies that are spoken will not accomplish what they were set out to do. But whatever God speaks, whatever the church declares, whatever the church de decrees will accomplish what it was set out to do. And we pray for this next generation, that they are protected by the Holy Spirit. That they will know who the true and living God is. They will be able to see the right and wrong and clearly make a choice of which way to go. They will not be deceived. They will not fall into the trap of the evil one. But they will become righteous through the Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed for us. They will not come into agreement with, with what the devil is doing. They will stand for what is right and what is holy. In the name of Jesus, amen.